I'm sure this has happened to you before. You've been using a program day in and day out, and right when you think you know everything there is to know about it, someone comes by and shares a tip that just blows your mind. Not only solves a lot of daily workflow issues, but most importantly, it brings up a really important question. How did I not know this? The application we're going to look at today is Illustrator. We'll go through workflow tips that are not so well known, but can be incredibly helpful in day-to-day -day work. The shortcuts I mention occasionally are the Mac ones. For Windows users, whenever I mention the command key, you just need to replace it with control. So let's get started. The first one has to do with color adjustments. There are several ways we can adjust colors on multiple objects. One I use all the time is by selecting the objects that have the same style and then use the recolor artwork command. It's a really quick way to adjust colors and most importantly, you can change more than one colors at a time. But there's this other very useful way of adjusting colors in a big scale and that's global color. To enable it, we double click on a color and tick the global color option. Now if we edit that color, every object using it will update to the new values. This is incredibly powerful when we're working in a complex artwork or with multiple artworks where we need to make a lot of adjustments in a lot of different places. Now let's have a look at another great little feature, and that's key objects. Here's a common scenario. We have a bunch of objects and we want to align them to each other. If I hit the top alignment button, all the objects will align to the top. But what if we want to use this one to align everything else? With our group selected, we just need to click once more on that object. Now Illustrator knows that it needs to use that for alignment. So if I now press the top alignment, all the other objects will move to the same level as our key object. Super easy and super fast. We can use the same key object feature to do something different. Distribute objects evenly on our artboard. Let's say we want our objects to be 50 pixels apart from each other. There are multiple ways to do that, but by far the fastest one is by using the distribute spacing option. With our object selected, we click again to set our key object, and in the align panel we then set the distance between these objects. Then we just need to select vertical or horizontal alignment, and just like that we have our distance set. Now for something simpler. Let's say we started drawing a shape, but we miscalculated and it's not exactly where we want it to be. We can fix the error by just holding down the spacebar. This will allow us to move the shape around as we're drawing it. Bonus tip, it also works in Photoshop. Views is an extremely powerful but underutilized feature in Illustrator. The idea behind it is really simple. We can save different locations and zoom states of our work area. Once we have it set up, we can quickly jump from one view to the other by just selecting the view. We can even assign keyboard shortcuts to each view, so the switch between the different views can be super fast. Where things get even more interesting though is the fact that we have the ability for multiple views side by side. This can be incredibly powerful. Here's one case I use all the time. Here I have a couple of artboards with multiple interface elements. If we're working on a lot of different designs, we would have to constantly zoom and pan around in order to copy one element from one artboard to another. But with the ability to have multiple views open side by side, we can use one view to work on our design and use the other view to switch between the artboards where we store all our elements. The good thing is that all these views are stored with our file, so we don't have to constantly set up things every time we open the file. Another great use for multiple views is icon design. We can have one view zoomed in where we can easily work on the icon, and on the other view we can monitor how everything looks at 100%. So we can immediately see how readable our icon is without having to constantly zoom in and out. Our next tip is along the same lines as views. Illustrator allows us to store object selections that we might want to have easy access to. This is especially useful in complex artworks where we might have groups within groups and objects underneath other objects. So if we reach a point in our artwork where we have to hide and lock elements multiple times in order to get to specific objects, then it's time to start taking advantage of selections. Let's take this super simple example. This object is made out of 7 elements and 2 groups. One group consists of all the elements and the other, the circles in the middle. The middle part is made out of three elements, the two circles at the top used for shading and the circle at the bottom which contains the base color. 
Now let's say we want to experiment with the base color of the bottom circle. So we need to easily have access to it in order to play with different colors. We have several ways to get to it, but none of them is as fast as having a selection of it. One way would be to dive into the groups and then hide the unwanted elements until we have clear access to the bottom circle. This can be time consuming, especially if we have to do that multiple times. But if we save the bottom item as its own separate selection, we can get to it super fast. Let's see how that works. Let's first ungroup everything. Once we have the bottom circle selected, we can go to the select menu and then pick save selection. We pick a name, group everything the way we want to, and now when the need arises, we can easily select the bottom circle by just picking it from the menu. Unfortunately, we cannot have shortcuts like we do with views. Maybe something for Adobe to add in the future. Next up, isolating layers. To quickly disable other layers and concentrate on the one we want to work on, we can just hit Alt and click on that layer. To go back to viewing all layers, we do the same thing again, but we can Alt click on any of the other layers. Another really useful tip that I'm using all the time is switching between color profiles. A lot of the times when picking colors, I usually switch between RGB and HSB. It just makes color creation a bit easier for me. Doing that through the menu though can be incredibly slow, but fortunately there's a faster way. If we hit shift and click on the color ramp, we will cycle through all the different color modes. Much faster and easier. Changing the documents units doesn't require going into the document setup menu. We can just enable the rulers by clicking command and R and then right clicking will expose the unit selection. And last but not least, selecting artboard objects. If we have a lot of artboards on a document, the select all command will select all objects from all artboards. To just select all the objects from the artboard we're working on, we just need to press command and option and A, or control and alt and A for Windows. And that's all I have for you today. Let me know if you would like another round of those tips, because I have quite a few more. And don't forget to mention some of your workflow tips in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.